I'm about to show you the robot that will likely be your at-home assistant in the very near future, greatly accelerating the timeline of ubiquitous robot ownership in every household. This robot can do incredible fine motor tasks like cooking a three course meal, cleaning spilled wine under a glass, and even doing your dishes. Demos for this robot went absolutely viral on the internet because it was beyond anything that we thought was possible today for the price. This technology and robot is called Mobile Aloha and contains multiple innovations in robotics, the biggest of which being this doesn't cost millions of dollars to build and run. It's actually pretty affordable. This is something you will need to know about, so stick around. I'm gonna break it all down for you and I'm gonna show you a bunch of absolutely mind-blowing demos. And the best part, it is completely open source, which means technically anybody could build this robot right now. So let's start from the beginning. Here's the research paper out of Stanford, and I've read through it and highlighted the most interesting parts. Learning by manual mobile manipulation with low-cost whole-body teleoperation. And the co-leads on the project are Zipang Fu, Tony Zhao and Chelsea Finn. Now let's start by reading the abstract, which summarizes all of the major findings in this paper. I highlighted this first line right here, which is really the most mind-blowing thing of all. The whole system, including the onboard power and compute, only costs $32,000. That is the same price as a mid-level automobile. As mentioned in this paper, the researchers have developed multiple new innovative techniques to make robots perform much better better than we ever thought was possible today at an extremely low cost using completely open source hardware and software. Now let's read a little bit from the abstract. Imitation learning from human demonstrations has shown impressive performance in robotics. We develop a system for imitating mobile manipulation tasks that are bimanual and require whole body control. Bimanual means it's using two hands and whole body control means that a human can actually control it with its own movement and arms and basically its whole body, as it says. Mobile Aloha, a low-cost and whole-body teleoperation system for data collection, augments the Aloha system, which was their original robotic system, with a mobile base and a whole-body teleoperation interface. So the Mobile Aloha takes the original Aloha system, straps a motor and wheels onto it, and allows it to move in the real world free form, and enables a human user to strap into it and teach it through human demonstration. And that's what you're seeing in this image right here. This person right here, who I assume is an author, is strapped in to the robot and is showing it how to do different things. Using data collected with Mobile Aloha, we then perform supervised behavior cloning and find that co-training with existing static Aloha datasets boosts performance on mobile manipulation tasks. With 50 demonstrations for each task, co-training can increase success rates by up to 90%, allowing Mobile Aloha to autonomously complete complex mobile manipulation tasks such as sauteing and serving a piece of shrimp, opening a two-door wall cabinet to store heavy cooking pots, calling and entering an elevator, and lightly rinsing a used pan using a kitchen faucet. Now, these tasks might be simple for a human, but that's only because we've had years of training. You have to understand that these tasks, which are basically muscle memory for us, we can perform them without even thinking about them, are actually incredibly complex. And I'll give some examples as to why that is soon. Many tasks in realistic everyday environments require whole body coordination of both mobility and dexterous manipulation, rather than just individual mobility or manipulation behaviors. So basically what they're saying is previous robot advancements have essentially been two arms or even just one arm strapped onto a static desk, for example, static table, and they're just following a pre-planned, pre-defined list of instructions for how to move. And that's typically how robots work in factories today. But what their innovation is, is when you actually have two arms plus you add movement and you allow it to generalize tasks based on a set of training data, then all of a sudden you have this robot that can move around the real world and perform tasks that it wasn't directly instructed to do. And this is just absolutely mind-blowing, the combination of robotics and artificial intelligence. 
Now, before I go on, I wanna show you a couple of the demos. This video is brought to you by Models Lab. Models Lab enables you to build next-gen AI applications without having to worry about maintaining GPUs. And you can start using those models instantly. Check out their newly rebranded site at modelslab.com. The first video we're gonna look at is the robot autonomously cooking a shrimp. Let's take a look. Now, this is filmed in real time. So you can tell it's a little bit slow, but still, incredibly impressive. So first, the robot picks up a jar of oil, pours it in the pan, and then puts the jar down. Then the robot reaches in for the bowl containing the shrimp, picks it up, and puts it in the pan. The shrimp starts cooking. Then the robot puts the bowl down and picks up the spatula. Grabbing the spatula, now with the other hand, grabs the pan and the spatula at the same time, puts the pan at an angle and flips the shrimp over to cook the other side of it. Absolutely mind-blowing. So here is a perfect example of needing two hands in coordination. Finally, the robot picks up the pan again when the shrimp is done cooking, turns around using the wheels on its base and its motor, and deposits the shrimp into the bowl, then puts the pan down. Now, that bi-manual work using two arms, two hands, is such a key capability of this robot and allows it to do so many different things around the house. Let's look at another example. Next in this example, there's a glass of wine that has spilled on the table. The robot is going to go over, grab a kitchen towel, turn around, now watch this, this is incredible. With one hand, it's going to pick up the still full glass of wine, and with the other hand, it's going to wipe up the wine. And then it puts the wine glass back down. Now let me show you one more demo before I go back to reading a little bit more about the research paper. In this demo, you're gonna see the robot move over to the elevator, push the button to the elevator, and wait for it, and finally enter when it opens. Let's take a look. So here it goes moving, again, completely autonomously, completely using open source software and hardware. It rolls over to the elevator, finds the button, so it's looking for the button right here, pushes the button with one arm, waits for the elevator, the elevator opens, now it moves itself to be able to enter the elevator and then finally enters the elevator. And then, turns around. Now one thing I want to point out is that this entire thing is powered by this laptop. It is not a supercomputer. This is consumer grade hardware. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So back to the research paper, there are two main factors hindering the wide adoption of imitation learning for bimanual mobile manipulation. One, we lack accessible plug and play hardware for whole body teleoperation. And what they mean by that is easy off the shelf, inexpensive hardware that can allow a human user to instruct remotely a robot. Bi-manual mobile manipulators can be costly if purchased off the shelf. Robots like PR2 and TIA Go can cost more than $200,000. And prior robot learning works have not demonstrated high performance bi-manual mobile manipulation for complex tasks. The interaction between the arms and the base actions can be complex and a small deviation in base pose can lead to large drifts in the arms end effector pose. So their first innovation with mobile Aloha is the fact that it extends the capabilities of the original Aloha with low cost and dexterous bimanual puppeteering setup by mounting it on a wheeled base. The user is then physically tethered to the system and back drives the wheels to enable base movement. This allows for independent movement of the base while the user has both hands controlling Aloha. The author is controlling the robot from behind, showing it how to do tasks. It is recording all of that data and using it to generalize on other tasks. And let's look at some of these generalizations. Here it is vacuuming. Here it is picking up and making coffee from a coffee pod, shaving. Here it is wiping up spilled milk, doing dishes. I mean, it is truly incredible. And as mentioned, one of the most impressive parts of this system is the fact that it is extremely low cost. 
and can operate completely autonomously without even being plugged into wall power. Our teleoperation system is capable of multiple hours of consecutive usage, such as cooking a three course meal, cleaning a public bathroom and doing laundry. And it can do complex tasks such as opening a two door wall cabinet to store heavy cooking pots, calling an elevator, pushing in chairs and cleaning up spilled wine. With co-training, we are able to achieve over 80% success on these tasks with only 50 human demonstrations per task, with an average of 34% absolute improvement compared to no training. We have innovations around cost, around efficiency, and using co-training as a way to vastly improve the performance of the robot. So how did they actually do it though? Unlike these prior works that use action primitives, state estimators, depth images, or object bounding boxes, imitation learning allows mobile manipulators to learn end to end by directly mapping raw RGB, the video, observations to whole body actions, showing promising results through large scale training using real world data in indoor environments. However, currently there is no low cost solution to collecting whole body expert demonstrations for bi-manual mobile manipulation. And that's where Mobile Aloha comes in. It is suitable for hour long teleoperation and does not require a FPV goggle. So first person view goggles for streaming back videos from the robots, egocentric camera or haptic devices. And the imitation learning they're using, they call behavioral cloning. And it is a simple version mapping observations to actions, scaling up these algorithms has led to systems adept at generalizing to new objects, instructions, or scenes. And so as they were building this robot, they took into consideration four main pillars. One, that it's mobile. The system can move at a speed comparable to human walking at around 1.42 meters per second. And it's stable, especially when manipulating heavy household objects such as pots and cabinets. It has whole body teleoperation, so all degrees of freedom can be teleoperated simultaneously, including both arms and the mobile base. And that is because they have a human hooked into the back of it. And that it is untethered. It has onboard power and compute. They used a piece of hardware called Agile X Tracer as the mobile base, which has up to 1.6 meters per second movement speed, which is similar to average human walking speed and a maximum payload of 100 kilograms and 17 millimeters in height. They also added a balancing weight to give it a lower center of gravity and less tipping potential. The Tracer costs $7,000 and is five times cheaper than AGVs. To make our mobile manipulator untethered, we place a 1.26 kilowatt hour battery that weighs 14 kilograms at the base. It also serves as a balancing weight to avoid tipping over. All compute during data collection and inference is conducted on consumer grade laptop with an NVIDIA 3070 Ti GPU. Just eight gigabytes of VRAM is all it needs to do the inference in real time. And an Intel i7. And it accepts streaming from three Logitech RGB webcams at 4080 by 640 resolution in 50 hertz. This is all mid-level or even lower consumer grade hardware. Now let's look at the performance and compare the difference of using their co-train method versus not using co-train. Now here is the task of wiping wine. For the grasping of a towel, it's almost equal. We had a 100% completion for co-train and 95% for no co-train. Then where the biggest difference comes in is lifting the glass and wiping, which is when the robot is using two hands and two arms, really where the Aloha system excels. So here we had a 95% success rate for co-train and only a 50% for no co-train. Then placing the glass back down, 100% for co-train, 90% or ninety for no co-train. And we're gonna see the same results on the other tasks, cooking shrimp, rinsing pan, using cabinet, calling elevator. Basically, when the robot required coordination between two arms and movement, that is when the mobile Aloha system really did so much better than the traditional no co-training method. Now let's watch a few more demos because I can't get enough of these. So where can this technology go? How can it improve? It is already extremely impressive, but I think it can improve in a few ways. Obviously, they can continue to bring the price down and to make robots ubiquitous in households, they're gonna have to bring the price down even further than the $32,000 price point that it's at now, which is already extremely cheap for what you're seeing. Second, they're probably gonna have to shrink the size down quite a bit. 
And I'm sure they could probably do that already because really the only pieces that are moving are the arms and the wheels and the motor that power the wheels. It's using a full laptop, for example. It has a lot of wires showing, so they would also have to consumerize it and package it in a way that looks appealing. Now, as I mentioned, they open sourced everything. So not only did they publish their paper, but they also have a tutorial for how to build the robot. Let's take a look. So here are the schematics of the robot. It tells you each piece of hardware that is used to build the robot, plus where you can buy it and how much it costs. All of the robot frame was built using simple stuff you can buy on Amazon. The expensive stuff tends to be up here, and that's the robot arms as well as the Tracer AGV hardware. Here we have a $700 battery pack from Amazon, a DC supply, a 12 volt DC cable, and so on. They also have some 3D printed parts, which they also provide to you. And they give you a step-by-step -step guide of how to build this robot. So, so cool. And also they give you the code for the hardware. So here is the actual code and instructions for how to install and run the hardware. And just as cool, they also provided the software that does the imitation learning with instructions, great documentation. This is so, so cool. So what do you think? How soon are we going to have a robot like this that is consumer grade that we can have in our household? I know Tesla is working on the Optimus robot and that is first going to be used in the Tesla factories, but something like this and looking at how incredible the improvement is from previous generations of robotics, I think it's going to be less than five years before we start having these in households. Probably not ubiquitous for another five or 10 years after that, but I am extremely excited for what's coming. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.